we're going to look at uh, something a little different here, uh, just because I brought um, part of the page from a workbook I use into this. And, and we're looking at here whether an order pair is a solution of a system in two linear um, equations. And the reason I wanted to use this is because it, it, it describes kind of an important business concept as well. However, um, when we're looking at this, this sort of also exemplifies whether an order pair is a solution for a system in two linear equations. So what we've got here is basically we've got a manufacturing company that's making iPad protective cases. Now the revenue is shown by the blue line and the cost to make the cases is shown by the orange line. So this is, if we had a rectangular coordinate grid, this would be quadrant one that we're looking at essentially. Okay. So we look at this and we say, okay, we see the revenue, we see the cost, where they meet is where we break even. So where our revenues and costs are equal, meaning we're no profit. But we can see these intersect at the point, it gives us a point here of 450, 15. And that means when 450 protected cases are sold, both costs and revenue are $6,750. Okay. So this, as I said, is the break even point. And if we go below that, if we look at, if we sell 400, you know, we're looking at a point here on the revenue, but above that we have the cost. So we'd be looking at kind of a loss there. If we look to the right side of this break even point and say we sold 600, well, we'd be looking at a point up here for revenue and here for cost. So the distance here would be essentially our profit. Now why this matters to us is because the lines that we have here are linear equations and they're in two variables, usually x and y we see. And a solution to this is where those lines cross or intersect each other. Okay? <clears throat> now not intercept, and the intercept is different. Remember an intercept is between the x and y axis. This is where the lines intersect or they meet. And this is a point that gives us a solution to an equation such as this. So I'm going to get rid of this now. And we're going to talk a little bit more um, about determining whether an order pair um, is a solution. So let's let's say we have two linear equations, and um, the first one we'll have is negative x plus y is equal to two. And the second one we'll have is 2x minus y is equal to 3. And we're going to say, okay, does the point negative 1, 1, is that a solution for this, what we call a system? Because we have two of them, we have to have, find out where they intersect. So again, we're just going to substitute, and we have x and y here. So if we plug our numbers in, we would have negative, negative 1 plus 1 equals 2. Now, is that true? Well, let's look. Negative, negative 1. Really, 1. 1 plus 1 equals 2. 2 equals 2. That's true. Okay, so that's a solution for the first equation. But now we have to check for the second one. So again, we're going to plug negative 1 in. We'll have 2 times negative 1 minus 1 equals 3. Okay. So, Let's look at this and see what we get here. 2 times negative 1. Um, we're looking at this. Let's see, is that true? Oh, that's supposed to be negative 3. Let's see, we we'll type that. Anyways, let's look at this. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Minus 1 equals negative 3. So if we look at this and combine one terms, negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3 equals negative 3. If that checks, then we know this point, negative 1, 1, is a solution to both of these linear equations in two variables. So this, what we call the system here, this would be a solution to this system because it makes both of these statements true. So, let's look at another example here. And the second example we're going to look at, let's say we have a system, let me move this up a little bit. So we have a system, and we'll say 5x plus 3y equals negative 1. 
and x minus y equals 1. And we want to say, what about the point negative 2, 3? All right, well, we'll plug this in. We have 5 times negative 2 plus 3 times 3 equals negative 1. So then 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Plus 3 times 3 is 9 equals negative 1. Negative 10 plus 9 is negative 1 equals negative 1. That checks. So we have to look at the second number. We'll say, okay, negative 2 minus 3 equals 1. Well, negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5 equals 1. That does not check out. No good. So this negative 2, 3 is not a solution to this set of equations. So basically, we're, all we're doing is stuff we've done before. We're plugging and playing and seeing if it's true. Now, in this case, if we have at least one solution, okay, so one solution to our set of equations, that means we're set to be consistent. Okay. Now, um, in an independent equation, if we have an independent equation, each equation in that system can't be algebraically derived from any other equation in the system. Right? In a dependent system, one system can be algebraically derived from another, meaning the graph of the same line. Now, if a system has no solution, so we, know, we have one solution, we can have no solution. If it has no solution, we are said to be inconsistent. So just something to remember here. So, we'll be back with another one. We're going to be looking at these systems here for a while. So, I hope this helps. Have a good day. Bye.